Hey everybody, it's Randy Ray, the Literate Texan, here at Driftwood Ranch. Nice rainy morning, weather's good, and I want to talk about my favorite book of all time. You know, the thing about having a, a favorite book of all time is that it's a very idiosyncratic thing. I, I'm not saying that this is the best novel ever written or, or anywhere in the league of that. I, I don't know that this belongs on any best of list or canonical list or anything like that. This is just the novel that over the last 15 or 20 years had the most effect on me for whatever reason. And uh, my favorite novel is called Everything Matters by Ron Curry Jr. This copy is a little more beat up than I would prefer, but uh, I loaned a copy of this to a girlfriend of mine a few years ago, and it was a beautiful hardcover copy, and I never got it back. But... I would like to read and talk about some of the stuff that has to do with the novel. One of the first things I want to talk about is, you know, fiction is written in, generally speaking, fiction is almost always written in first person or third person. In other words, uh, and most of the people watching my channel know this already, but please forgive the, the quick explanation. First person is when you say I or we, you know, I did this, then I did that or whatever. And then third person is, he did this, he did that. So what you don't see very often in fiction, although I understand you see it occasionally, is second person. And second person is when you say you did this and you did that. As you can imagine, that would make for an unusual reading experience. But this is one of the rare books that I've found that uses the, in fact, it's the only one I can think of, but I'm sure someone better read than I could give you a list of examples of, of novels that use the second person. But in this particular novel, the, the protagonist is a character named J Junior Thibodeau, and he has voices in his head that are always right about everything. And this novel covers his entire life, of course. Well, I don't know why I say of course, that doesn't happen in every novel. But the first chapter is written in second person, and then there are periodic chapters afterwards that sort of take the place of a countdown. But uh, I just want to read this. This is the voice in his head talking to him when he's still in uh, in utero, and and that is indeed uh, the title of the chapter: in utero, comma infancy, and the countdown starts at ninety seven. Ninety seven. I'm just going to read the first paragraph just to give you a hint of how, how the second person goes. First. Enjoy this time. Never again will you bear so little responsibility for your own survival. Soon you will have to take in food and dispose of your own waste, learn the difference between night and day, and acquire the skill of sleeping. You will need to strengthen the muscles necessary to sustain high-volume keening for long intervals. You will have to master the involuntary coos and facial twitches, which are the foundation of infantile cuteness, to ensure that those charged with caring for you continue to provide food and clean linen. You will need to flex your arms and legs, lower your head to strengthen the neck, crawl, stagger to your feet, then walk. Soon after, you must learn to run, share, swing a bat and hold a pencil, love, weep, read, tie your shoelaces, bathe, and die. There's much to learn and do in little time. Suffice it to say that you should be aware of the trials ahead so that you may appreciate the effortless, liquid dream of gestation while it occurs, rather than only in hindsight. For now, all you need to do is grow. So, you know, periodically throughout the book, and, and this book is told from multiple points of view, but periodically throughout the book, it'll go back to this second person point of view where the voices in his head are, are, are talking to Junior Thibodeau, the main character. But you also have chapters that are written from, you know, the perspective of his dad, from the perspective of his brother, from the perspective of his mother, from the perspective of his girlfriend, per, from the perspective of uh, his uncle. But, you know, I haven't really told you very much about the book, so if you're not familiar with it, I'll read this inside front flap, which I... I I feel like there should be a spoiler warning attached to it, but since it's the front flap, I mean, you know, who doesn't read that in the bookstore before they pick out the book? But, but so here's what it says. You alone know that the world will end 36 years after your birth. Do you succumb to nihilistic apathy? 
Use your singular knowledge to save mankind. To what end do you live your life? While still in his mother's womb, Junior Thibodeau is encoded with a prophecy. In 36 years, a comet will obliterate life on earth. Born to a working class family in rural Maine, he comes of age in the shabby decadent 80s, a time of Atari, baseball cards, pop Catholicism, and cocaine, all the while grappling with one question, does anything I do matter? While Junior searches for meaning in a world only he knows is doomed, the voice that has accompanied him since conception appraises his choices. From sibling rivalry over the table box to first love in grade school, from crazed misadventures in Chicago to an all-out attempt to cheat death itself. Junior's loved ones, too, reckon with lives that cast his existential crisis into sharp relief. His anxious mother, his older brother, a child cocaine addict turned pro baseball savant, his exalted father, whose mortal illness summons the best and worst in his sons, and Amy, the love of Junior's life and a North Star to his journey through romance and heartbreak, drug-addled despair, and superheroic feats that might save humanity. As our recognizable world is transformed into a bizarre nation at Endgame, where government agents conspire in subterranean bunkers, preparing citizens for immigration from the planet, Junior's final triumph ushers in something else altogether, an astonishing outcome that reconfigures everything we thought we knew about his universe as well as our own. So there's the summary from, you know, uh, from, from the outside looking in. This is also one of the finest audio productions that I've ever had. They, uh, they use different actors to read the various chapters based on whose point of view those chapters are from. Um, which was used to good effect also in uh, World War Z, which is probably tied for uh, best audio production that I've ever heard. But uh, but anyway, yeah, I can't recommend this book highly enough. I don't want to spoil any more of it, but it's beautifully written. It's a great story. Um, you know, if you're a Gen Xer like me, you'll remember growing up in the 80s and probably be able to relate to the main character, you know, a little better than some people. Um you know, I don't have much more to say about my favorite book of all time because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody who might think about reading it. I'm pretty sure this is still available on Amazon. I've read all of Ron Curry Jr.'s books, and this is far and away the best one, I think. But uh, but I've liked his other books, too. And, uh, and I hope he comes out with something new soon. Um, he seems to have kind of disappeared, at least from the fiction writing scene. I hope that means he's working on a really really fat, long novel that, uh, that tops even this. But uh, I've read this several times. I've read it aloud multiple times to multiple people. And uh, I have to admit, me reading it aloud is not nearly as good as that Audible production that you, you'll find uh, online. So that's my favorite book, Everything Matters by Ron Curry Jr., and uh, the weather's getting a little cooler, so I'll probably leave out the reminders about staying hydrated. I think anybody who watches my channel regularly has gotten the hint by now. But uh, until my next video, stay sexy, folks.